My name's Malin, and this video is for people feeling behind, struggling to change, feeling lost or stuck in a self-help rut. So my story is when I was 12, I got my first self-help book from my parents. It was called The Why Are You Here Cafe, and that was kind of my first step into kind of this self-improvement, self-help kind of concept. But it wasn't until I was 14 and I got into soccer that I decided I wanted to become a professional soccer player and that I wanted to immerse myself more in these podcasts and books. I became addicted to these self-help ideals out of an ego attachment and from low self-esteem. I had very high expectations and I kept falling. I didn't have very good systems and I tried to rely too much on goals. And this reinforced the belief of me being a loser and feeling like a loser. I had this back and forth kind of thing and I didn't realise that shit takes time. Rome wasn't built in a day. I'd go into this just depressive, apathetic kind of binge state. And then I would have this emotional rise and try to upheave it all and then go on this insane kind of grind. I was in this emotional roller coaster, something I, I call bipolar action. We overestimate what we can do in one year and underestimate what we can do in 10. The fool who continues in his folly, folly will become wise. I didn't, learn, I didn't know that we have to learn from experience and that's so much more deeper and that we can learn a lot of things from getting higher level thoughts and knowledge from other people and gurus and teachers and all that. But when you experience something, it sits deep in you. It resonates with your emotions. Fuck motivation. Society praises the people who beat themselves into submission to achieve their goals. But man is a string tied between a beast and a superhuman. We have two sides, feeling and thought. One side, one, we can get too one-sided and be too logical and cold, or we can become too emotional and turbulent and childlike. People who are addicted to power and success are as much addicted as the heroin addict. The only difference is that society's praise and view is more on the people that are successful. Hedonists seek pleasure and this begets more pain and this leaves them unbalanced. You know, the more pleasure you seek, the more pain you'll get. And ma the masochist, on the other hand, seeks pain and then tries to get more pleasure. It's like this seesaw. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So why not have both and kind of be balanced? Our emotional side is the one that's often more in control and we have to honour that. People like addicts, we seem to look down on them, but do addicts really choose to become addicted? It's not a problem, it's a solution. They have a problem that comes from the past that reinforced a belief, created a trauma, and they seek a release or a way to kind of cope or deal with that kind of emotion. Otherwise, it's just going to be there. And... If they don't do something about that, then they may feel like they have to take their own lives because they have no hope for the world. We are not emotional robots, nor are we impulsive animals. By using our intellect and creative power, we can fashion a life we desire. And by being realistic and working with our emotional side, we find that we can shift our emotions to actually enjoy a lifestyle that benefits us more than it harms us, rather than being at the mercy of our emotional side and not looking after ourselves. Why we never change. By trying to do too much and change too quickly, we come against more and more resistance. This eventually builds up until it cracks and we snap back to where we started, like a rubber band. And every time you say you'll do X and fail, this reinforces beliefs in your head, perpetuating the doubt and the self-esteem and your low self-esteem. Your brain remembers this, and whenever you try to change, says, Hey, remember that time when we didn't do it, when we didn't actually do it, when we said we were actually going to do it? Yeah, so let's not bother about that. The cost of our consciousness is anxiety and guilt, for we can rethink the things we've done and what could have been. And the ego 
wants you to do or try to do too much because it knows that you won't last and will fail and will come back to what you were doing before into its comfortable state where it knows it can get satisfaction. To be that, <laughs> you must give in to it. Sounds ironical, right? But by giving into it and letting it do what it wants, it can't fight back. So you can eventually and slowly build in these habits and these things that benefit you more and more until you actually enjoy doing those things and they become more, more a part of your identity until that these things that you put in, that you implement these healthier habits, you want to do them more than you do the other habits that you don't want to do that you want to change. This also requires facing your beliefs. Be okay with losing. Because if you can be okay with that, who can hurt you? Get comfortable being uncomfortable. Not doing excessive work. You've done that before, but facing your ego and beliefs, cooling it down. How hard is that? You can't get what you don't have with the same beliefs and the same actions that got you where you are. You're not prepared for those things, and that's why you don't have them. You wouldn't be able to keep them either because you haven't built up the skills and you don't know how you got them. We like to think that with a solution, if I could just do or have X, then I would be okay. But problems always reoccur. We get these things and then we get used to them. And then what? Would you really want a perfect life? Just think about it. Would you want everything you want? Would you want everything you desire right now? as you have it. Whenever you have a desire, you get it. Would you really want that? And if not, why would you, why not just live in a VR world where you can just control all that and do whatever the fuck you want? Real life is a yin and yang balance, white and black. They are two parts of one whole. Without one side, for example, the dark, there would be no light. The darker the darks, the lighter the lights and vice versa. Sacrificing and suffering for a cause makes the reward so much better. The way forward is actually and frankly quite easy. But in the emotional turbulence stirred up, we lose sight of this. Society praises these individuals for beating their emotions into submission and grinding to achieve their goals and dreams. Social media portrays all these beautiful people and their amazing lives creating a huge discrepancy between our internal experiences and others' external lives. This increases our anxiety. It makes us feel as though we have to compensate for the gap and do even more to catch up. So why even fucking change? If in the end we all die and get forgotten, and even the impact we leave is for nothing, because the world would be destroyed anyway, what's the fucking point? So what, you're just going to give up? The point is that we are alive. Really, there's no reason for this. Us needing a reason is also quite selfish and hedonistic. We can create our own meanings and importances which can help us in life and help us to suffer for a cause and a reason. But really, at the end of the day, we're just floating around on this rock in a huge black void. Why not live? We have this life. Does there have to be a point? Can't we just try and be the best people we can in our lives? People in the past have created religion and this idea of a God to give them a purpose and meaning, a reason and for something to look for after death. This was abused and used to enslave people to power. But what is this concept of God and is it actually useful? Let's explore this a little bit more. Not in the sense of this guy in the sky, but there's some things that we just can't put our fingers on why and what happens and where does it come from. That's God or source or whatever you want to call it. The most enlightened people, the Buddha and Jesus, proclaim themselves as gods or sons of God. People praise them and put them above others as if they're some sort of special kind of people. But what they tried to teach us is that God isn't some ephemeral or something that's out there, or some tangible God in the sky, but he's inside us and he's in life all around us. Just like an artist is in the song, the creator is a part of the product. 
<laughs> but if there was a God, why is there suffering? Why do I still suffer all that? I prayed, didn't I? <laughs> Here's a short story for you. A man wanted to win the lottery. So he prayed, he prayed, and he prayed. Days passed, weeks passed, months passed, leading into years passing, until eventually he died without winning the lottery. So when he got to heaven, he asked God, why didn't you let me win the lottery? To which God replied, well, you could have at least bought a ticket. <laughs> the 70% law. The 70% law states that the optimal path for reliable and lasting growth is in the middle. 50% is staying the same. Any less is falling back. 100% is overdoing it. And 1000% is just plain crazy. By leaning just beyond our edge, we can grow and keep our emotional sides happy and create lasting growth. 70% is doing what's manageable, just out of reach. It's unique to you and up to you to decide and figure out because you need to take into all of your factors and your individual needs, where you are and all that. I recommend using your worst days as reference for the 50% mark so that when you do have a bad day, it's easier to do the tasks that you have set. And when you have a better day, you can do a little bit more and feel better about yourself. Really limit your expectations on this. The natural state of the world is entropy. What doesn't get used gets lost and deteriorates. By using our minds to gain clarity and act, we can create a better environment and life for ourselves. We can clean up the mess. Consider your past, all the habits, beliefs and experiences that have impacted you. These have been built up and reinforced over years. The most important task when trying to change is to build trust with yourself. Especially if you've lost it and struggled to respect, love, listen and trust yourself. This is the long way. It will take years. But the results compound and each week, month and year gets slightly easier. You need to build up your vessel to be able to handle these harder tasks, the ones that you want. Often self-help people say, set your goals higher, double them. Triple them. I say half them, then half them again. Has it worked for you doubling and tripling them, setting your sights even higher? If you keep falling back and never achieve any of your goals and struggle to be inconsistent, then maybe try it out. Starting is always the hardest and the ego will always pipe up and want you to do more. Don't. The most important thing I can keep saying to you is to start small and focus on building that trust with yourself. It's tantamount to change. But if you don't and think I'm stupid, well, fair enough. Prove me wrong. Continue in what way you think is right. Either way, I wish you the best. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.